Hi, and thanks for taking some time out of your day to drop by. Today's subject is low-key photography. The question is, why would you want to deliberately underexpose an image? Well, it could be for a few different reasons. Maybe you want to add a little bit more drama to a shot. Or maybe it's about concealing to add mystery. Lots of different reasons why you might want to do low-key photography. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to show you some examples of low-key photography and how you can make those images. Often low-key photography is associated with studio work, with portraiture, that kind of thing. But today we're going to be showing a little bit of that, but also how it can be used for other subjects as well. As usual, questions and comments can be addressed down below. Let's get started. First up, this is really, really simple because it was an overcast day, which is perfect for this kind of thing. So I exposed for this area in here, and then the rest went darker, but not quite dark enough. So then you set your camera's exposure compensation. I, on this one, I set it down another minus two uh, stops. And it came out really, really well. Of course, after you've done this, if it's not perfect, you can always perfect it a little bit in post-processing, bring it into Lightroom or something else that you may have, and just adjust it that way a little bit. But overcast is really, really easy. Makes it really easy for you when you're doing this kind of photography. Same thing here. I exposed for this up here and everything else went really dark. As I said, an exposure compensation to around minus one or minus two. Now it gets a little more difficult because now it's sunny outside. And when it's sunny, it makes it, it, there's so much more difference between what's light and what's dark. So even if you expose say minus three, mm, not going to work because everything's just going to go muddy and it's not going to look very good. It's going to go too dark. So what I did here was I used flash, but that's also a problem because now your flash, which may go to 1, 125th, 125 or 1, 250 of a second, it may not be enough. So you have to set your flash to high speed sync in the sunshine. It really does help. So what you would do here typically, and what I did was I exposed for the flower in the sunshine. But remember, all of this in back here, all the leaves and everything, they were, most of those were in sunshine too. So just setting it to minus three exposure compensation or even minus five might not be enough. So what I did was I exposed for the flower in the sunshine. I then set to uh, an exposure compensation of around minus five. But now, of course, my flash can't handle it because I need a, a faster shutter speed typically around one one thousandth, maybe even one two thousandth of a second. So now you have to set your flash to high speed sync. And when you do that, then you can shoot at that kind of a shutter speed. And I think this time it was about one five hundredth or one one thousandth of a second. And you have your exposure compensation on your camera down to whatever you want, minus three, minus four, minus five, whatever it is. And then the flash works on high speed sync and you get something like this, which is a little bit different. It almost looks like it was shot at night. Queen Anne's Lace, they look like they're floating in the dark. Sunny day, exposed for the flower. Exposure compensation on manual, shooting manual mode. And by the way, it was on manual mode for this image as well. On manual mode, about minus three, minus four. Exposure comp. Sunny day, this is an umbrella, okay, an outdoor umbrella. And I wanted it to go black in the shadows. And basically what you have is an abstract image of three lines. That's it. Low key photography. Okay, let's go into the studio. Now, who is this serious guy anyway, looking back at you? Well, of course, it's yours truly. But why I'm showing you this, aside from the fact that low key photography is extremely popular, in uh, studio photography, portrait photography, and for good reason, it can really add drama and mystery to your image. This was taken in such a simple way, so I'm showing you this because if you don't have a big studio setup, that's okay. You can still do effective low-key photography. It's really simple, look at this. Nothing going on here, a background, a, a blue wall, there's this black piece of velvet, I've got a flash here, 
and I've got a towel. Now, the flash I held further away than what you see here, but when I took my first shot, it was too bright. So I just draped the towel over the flash and that was it. The flash wasn't even connected to the camera. I just popped the test button. That was it. And I came up with this, an extremely simple way to do low key photography. If you're a dedicated studio photographer, you do it all the time. Of course, you're going to spend the money uh, for expensive equipment. But personally, I don't do a lot of this kind of work, so I don't feel like spending my money on a big setup. So here you have it. Really simple. And you get some pretty dramatic results. Low key photography, easy enough to show up what's going on inside here if I wanted to, but I didn't. I just wanted you to concentrate on one thing these clothes in the sunshine. Low key photography. Turned to black and white. The background was actually a very dark green after I underexposed the whole image. I exposed for these seeds here driving the image darker, and then I used exposure compensation down to about minus two, turned it to black and white, and you come up with something like this. And these leaves coming out of the dark into the sunshine. So as you can see, there are lots of different options for low-key photography, and there is no proper exposure. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve as a photographer. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.